Hello, Twisted Humans! Do you find yourself wanting to know more about the latest murder, conspiracy, cult, or haunting? Then this is the podcast for you. We're bringing the most intense stories that will keep you up at night. Join us every Tuesday for a glass of wine and a dose of true crime. I'm Alicia. And I'm Sierra. And this is Twisted Twisted and Uncorked. Uncorked. The trailer you heard at the start of the episode literally just now was for my friends Alicia and Sierra with the Twisted and Uncorked podcast. Each episode, they surprise each other with new topics ranging from true crime, paranormal, and conspiracy theories. That's my shit. All while getting a little twisted with some drinks. How old are you? Check them out on all major platforms. Aloha. What's up, everyone? Thanks for joining me in the sand tonight. The fire is raging. Perfect for these winter nights. Wherever you are. The ocean breeze is cooler than usual. Can you smell the salt in the air? Ah. I don't know what that was. I have nothing else to say. (laughs) So let's jump right in. Sit back with all... Well, you know the kind. And let's get into this. As I've said in previous episodes, supernatural events have been a part of my life for as long as I can remember. The more I look into my family's past, the more I've learned many other family members experienced the unexplainable, not just Tutu. This episode, I'll be covering a few stories that involved a few of my mom's first-hand experiences that made her wonder if there was more to life after death. This first story happened when she was a young girl growing up in Pahoa on the eastern side of the Big Island of Hawaii. When my mom was young, she'd regularly walk to school as my grandparents were already hard at work on their Anthurium farm. The walk from their home was roughly a mile through the thick jungle that was Pahoa back in the day. Unlike the arid, volcanic landscape that surrounded the western parts of the island, Pahoa was on the eastern side of Hawaii and was cool lush, and more of a tropical rainforest. Beverly was a friend and neighbor of my mom, and the two made the walk to and from school each day. Back then, the dirt road that connected the family homes was surrounded by thick vegetation and could alternatively be called a wide trail. John Cam Pop! Along the walk, the girls laughed and shouted while playing the version of rock, paper, scissors common in Hawaii. For most of the walk, the road was surrounded by dense trees, bushes, and vines, making visibility into the brush nearly impossible. Sounds seemed to echo around them, bouncing off anything and everything in the jungle. Even on a sunny day, the road always felt dark and cold. The smell of mud and moss permeated the air.
When the girls reached a little past the halfway mark towards their school, they approached the landmark well known to the Keiki kids who grew up in the area. The Pau Hale, as the kids called it. Hale in Hawaiian means house, and Pau P-A-U, most commonly translates to finish or done, as in, You all Pau with your dinner? However, the word Pau is commonly misused in Hawaii. If you were to say, I'm Pau, the most common assumption would translate it as, I'm finished. I'm all Pau. But it could also mean, I'm done, as in, I'm dead, or a goner. I'm all Pau. Pau Hale was the only structure visible along the road. And with its creepy, dilapidated condition, the broken windows, caved-in roof, cracked front door, stories of the Hale easily spread amongst the kids. The most popular origin story being of the dead family who used to live on the property. A husband and wife built the home themselves and started a small farm, a lot like the other residents in the area. The family grew, the wife giving birth to two children, the husband often seen lounging on their porch proudly surveying their hard-earned life. Everything seemed happy for now. Until one day, people began to realize the wife stopped going to the town for her weekly supply run, as had been her routine. But for days, neighbors and passerbys saw the man standing on his front porch, staring off into the distance as he always had, so assumed everything was fine. It wasn't until weeks later that the community learned the truth. The husband had recently found out the failing farm would be repossessed and the family would be kicked off the land. Instead of living with this shame, it broke the young man and he murdered his wife and two children before hanging himself on the front porch. Neighbors mistook the hanging dead body for the father just standing on his porch, deep in thought. It wasn't until the rope tore through the decomposing body of the husband and it crumpled to the ground that the town realized he had been dead the whole time. Rumors swirled that even after years of the house being vacant, movement could be heard from within the home, like a family still lived there. Some even say they saw a man standing on the front porch, waving to them as they passed. (laughs) Other versions of the tale depict an enraged husband who, after learning his wife had cheated and the children were not his, 
kills the family, then himself. Another was that the husband was the one who had been cheating. After finding out, the wife kills the children in revenge. The enraged husband kills his wife before ending his own life in grief. Either way, the stories always had a dark, destructive finish, a la Pau Hale. My mom said she always got an eerie feeling when they approached the crumbling wood house, even before hearing any of the urban legends. The feeling would start with a tingle in her stomach that spread into anxious nervousness, only to dissipate the further she got from the house. Today, During this point of the girl's walk, she was feeling the full-blown spooky vibes. Beverly continued to skip along the road, then stopped suddenly, like an invisible wall had blocked her path. She stood straight as an arrow and slowly pivoted on her heels to face my mom. A kolohe, mischievous smile oozing from Beverly's face. Weird description, but okay. My mom said she stopped dead in her tracks. See where I get my puns? I want to try something, Beverly chuckled. She scanned the ground as she excitedly hopped around, looking for the perfect, aha, found one. Beverly picked up a smooth, flat stone the size of a poker chip. She dusted the rock off. It was about two inches in diameter and a lighter gray than the volcanic pumice that made up the gravel road. Cool rock, my mom said. It looks like it came from the river. What you gonna do with them? This is a special rock. Feel how much heavier it is than those lava rocks, Bev said. It was true. The porous pumice stones were significantly lighter in weight. This one's perfect. I'm gonna see if I can hit the house. The same Kolohe look in her eye. But why? The children in the area all assumed the house was empty, but still told stories of a hermit or obake ghost who still haunts the home. Although my mom knew they wouldn't really get into any trouble for doing this, she still felt hesitation. Before my mother could talk her out of it, Beverly took a couple steps backwards for a running start and whipped the rock in the direction of the dilapidated home. For a split second... The girls stayed silent, listening for the object to hit glass or wood. But just as the girls' ears registered the sound of the projectile whipping through the leaves of the trees, oh shit. Beverly stumbled backwards, clutching the left side of her forehead. Blood trickled down her face, mixing with the tears that streamed down her cheeks. 
on the ground next to where Beverly sat, screaming, lay the smooth, poker chip sized rock she had just thrown. A blotch of Beverly's blood now on the rock. But how? My mom said she saw Beverly chuck the same exact rock at the crumbling house. The rock flew back almost instantaneously after Beverly threw it. After that day, the girls always ran past the property, never even slowing down to look at it. My mom still got that eerie feeling when she was in the vicinity of the house, but did her best to ignore it. Over the next few years, the house continued to crumble until collapsing on itself. Someone would eventually buy the property, clear it, and turn it into farmland. But still, every now and then, the sounds of a family, laughter, kids playing, dishes, being laid out for supper can still be heard in the vicinity of where the house once stood. Spooky, yeah? That story is pretty much exactly how I remember it being told to my sister and I, besides the origin story of Pau Hale. I changed the name to Pau Hale for the sole purpose of throwing in some Hawaiian lessons. The house wasn't nicknamed Pau Hale. If I remember correctly, it was named the Obake House or Ghost House or something like that. But my mom's friend did get hit in the face by a flying rock right after throwing it. My mom actually helped search the ground for her eyeball. (laughs) Nah, just joking. This next story is another real incident that happened to my mom. Mama's boy. I wanted to include it in my family's personal stories because it shows not all supernatural interactions have to be spooky like this voice so go suck them up green bottles get litty paranormal pakalolo throw another log or pallet on the bonfire and let's get into this i've been lucky enough to have met and remember both my great grandmothers and one great grandpa I refer to my paternal great-grandmother as Tutu in episode 5. Like my family in Lahaina, my maternal great-grandma, my mom's grandma, lived with my grandparents. I have fond memories of visiting Pahoa, and it's amazing to think we were visiting two different generations of grandparents. My mom was always close with my great-grandparents, as they were always around during her childhood. I have a few specific memories of my great-grandma from when I was young. She was a cross-stitch and lay-making master, making complex lays out of yarn or tea leaf for graduations. Every morning, She'd sit at the kitchen table, eating crackers and peanut butter, then move to her recliner in the living room to read the paper or watch TV. One evening, when I was in high school, my family got a phone call. My great-grandma had a stroke, and was in a coma in the ICU. It was in the middle of the week, and since the hospital was on the other side of the island, we decided to finish the work-slash-school week 
and head to the east side of the Big Island on Friday. Sadly, we would not make it in time. I recently read an article thumbnail that suggested coma patients are conscious and can hear and conceptualize what's going on around them. I always wonder if my great-grandmother was waiting for us to say goodbye, but after a few days of us not being able to get there, decided it was her time. She passed away just before we left. My family decided to postpone the trip to Pahoa since the memorial service would be in about a week and stayed home. It was tough for our family, especially my mom, knowing we had missed our chance to say goodbye in person. Then, a few days after my great-grandmother's passing, we got a phone call that shocked us all. My mother, exhausted from working all day, she'd start at 4 a.m., then helping plan my great-grandma's service, had been asleep. At around 2 or 3 in the morning, the phone began to ring. My mom, being a light sleeper, jumped up to answer the phone so as not to disturb the rest of us. As she ran to the phone, she glanced at the time. A quarter to three? Worry and panic snatched any remaining sleep from her. Anytime someone calls in the middle of the night, it can't be good, she thought. Hello? My mom answered nervously. Only static could be heard coming from the other end of the line. Hello? Anyone there? Hello? Hello? Can you hear me? Yes, I'm... I'm here. Who is this? My mom politely responded. A chill ran through her, but she didn't know why. Hi. Hello. Okay. Bye. Goodbye. Slowly putting the phone down to hang up, my mom replayed the odd conversation in her mind. It couldn't be. She realized why she got the chicken skin during the phone call. It was the voice. The voice of my late great-grandmother. The timing of the the middle-of-the-night call was odd enough, but it was unusually staticky as well. This was a landline phone before cell phones were in everyone's pockets, so spotty calls like this one always stood out. To this day, my mom can't help to think this was my great-grandmother's way of saying goodbye Not so spooky, yeah? Thank you so much for tuning in to episode 11 of the Ghost Lore of Hawaii podcast. This one was another really personal episode. 
I remember my mom telling my sister and I these stories ever since we were young. Although many explanations can be attributed to the odd phone call, crossed lines, wrong number, prank call, according to my mom, there was an uncanny resemblance to the voice on the phone and my late great-grandmother. The person also seemed content to end the call after saying goodbye. Just the hi and goodbye at three in the morning. What do you think? Have you experienced anything similar to this incident? Email me your thoughts and stories to ghostlore.of.hawaii at gmail.com. If you've been enjoying the Ghost Lore of Hawaii Paranormal Paradise podcast, please leave a rating and review on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. It really helps independently produced shows like this one get in front of new audiences. You can follow me on Instagram at ghostlore.of.hawaii. I post pictures and definitions relevant to the episodes, as well as personal content and memes I find funny. Dad humor. There's also a Facebook group for the Ghost Lore of Hawaii Ohana. You can find it if you search for the name of the podcast. I'm still kind of getting the hang of it. I'm getting better, I promise. I want to shout out Kamuela and Matt from the group. Kamuela has been uploading links to each episode. And Matt has invited a ton of new members to the group. Mahalo, guys. Please share your favorite episodes with your friends. If they go to www.ghostloreofhawaii.com, they can choose what app they want to listen through or listen directly from the website on phone or computer. The more we can grow the podcast, the more content I can put out for you all. Some names and locations may be altered for privacy's sake. Some stories may differ from the original version, but the backbone of the tale will remain the same. This one's perfect. <laughs> but it was unusually statically. But it was unusual static. Thanks for joining me in the tub tonight. <laughs> I want to see if I can hit the house. I want to see. <clears throat> I want. <laughs> I want to see. Why does it sound so creepy? I want to see if I can hit the house. <laughs>